Hello folks, I'm Rupert Soskin. And I'm Michael Bott. Welcome back to Kalanish Conversations. We're the Prehistory Guys, and today we're delighted to be talking with Joanna Hambly from the Scape Trust, that's Scottish Coastal Archaeology and the Problem of Erosion. As an archaeologist, Joe worked all around the world before coming back to the UK to work in commercial and curatorial archaeology. She joined Scape back in 2009, where she's involved with some important work regarding coastal archaeology, some of which involves the island of Lewis. So we thought we'd invite her on to tell us a bit more about it. Joe, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. So Rupert and I gather that uh, you're responsible for running the Scape Trust, along with Tom Dawson. Could you tell us what the, uh, the Scape Trust is and, and, and what it tries to do? So SCAPE, um, it's an acronym, it stands for Scotland's Coastal Archaeology and the Problem of Erosion. Now, we don't really like the term problem, but um, that oh. was that's replacing SCAPE's first iteration, which was Scotland's Coastal Archaeology and the Paleo Environment. And Tom got so fed up with trying to explain <laughs> what paleo environment was to people that he abandoned it and called it the problem of erosion instead. And what Scape does is we work yeah. with local residents all around the coast of Scotland to research and survey and document and look at the condition of coastal archaeology um, that's being impacted or being affected by coastal processes. So usually mm. this would be, you know, wave action, you know, that they're, they're vulnerable to erosion. And the reason why we do this, um, well, many reasons, the most important reason um, is that it's really enjoyable for people to learn about what's around them. And any archaeological site, especially one that has been half sectioned by waves, you can see inside it. So you can see structures and layers and bones and pottery and shells. Yeah. And, you know, people are really interested in that. And it invites you to think about it and learn more about the past. So for us, that's the most important reason for involving people in research um, in archaeology on the coast. So, and I get this right, it's sort of um, crowdsourced. You're, you're involving large numbers of people uh, and because data is important. Uh, exactly, yeah. To you, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So we try, um, we do involve quite large numbers, actually. I think over the last, mm. I mean, I've been with Scape for 10 years. Tom's been with Scape for 20 years. Um, so I must have worked with, you know, thousands of people actually wow. and that can be sure. anything from just a straightforward coastal walk um, to you know quite large-scale excavation projects that are rescuing sites that are really really vulnerable to erosion wow okay well i gather you were up on lewis recently weren't you doing some coastal survey work for richard bates year of coast we waters project yeah tell us a bit about that yeah so that was really exciting because Actually, that was our first field work after the whole COVID um, period. So we went up um, in July and it was part of a project which is interested in looking beneath the peat to reconstruct what the landscape and environment and vegetation was like when the Kalanish stones were, you know, in in use as it were right. i know they use now but you know when they when they're originally in use so that was a project uh led by richard bates who's a geophysicist so he uses um equipment um to look beneath a peat but a, another really good way of looking beneath it is go to the coast and of course again you know the sea has done its work and it's it's eroded, you know, through the peat so that you can see what's going on underneath it. So it's a very good way of just like looking at um, little samples. You can get little eroding mm. um, areas where the the land, the, you know, the land beneath the peat is exposed. 
So, um, so what did you actually find out during the course of that uh, that work? And uh, uh, can can people find out more about uh, the work that you've done, Jo? Um, they absolutely can find out more about it. In that, that we've written a report about it, and that will go. Oh. That's up on our website. Um, so if you yeah. go in our website, if you look along the top, I think it's called um, reports or resources. So if you go there, you'll find you'll find all of our reports, and it's mm -hmm. called the Callanish Coastal Survey. And we found we found two main things. So we did find plenty of evidence of prehistoric, um, well, activity. So mainly field walls that were running beneath the peat that exposed on the beach. We also found a nice um, flint flake that was buried in an old ground surf surface. Um, and we also found, which was unexpected and quite exciting, is what we call submerged forest. And these forests oh, lovely. weren't enormous great big trees. They were more like sort of uh, scrubby, scrubby woodland, I would call it. Mm -hmm. And when sea levels rose, um, well, yeah, really, since since the stone, well, in this case, it's sea level rise and peak development have buried the tree. The trees have died and fallen over, and they've been preserved beneath the peak. So we found some nice sections of those quite near the stones, actually, just north of them. Wow. Terrific. What sort, what sort of dates are you able to put on those uh, field boundaries, uh, Joe? Uh, the field boundaries, so other people have dated them and they would be late Neolithic and lots of early oh, Bronze right. Age, or lots of early Bronze Age as oh, well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So what, what it, it is, is fascinating. fascinating. So what yeah. what's next for the coastal archaeology of Lewis then? Uh you know, how, how's that looking? And can people get on board to help uh, uh with uh, with preserving well preserving the fragile resource apart from anything else? Can uh, if, there's probably not a lot we can do to preserve it, but what we can do is preserve the, the knowledge. So in terms of sites on the coast that are being eroded, um, we do have a philosophy of we, we sort of don't really try and interfere with it, but we do try and learn from, from these sites. So we have an app um, that you can download for free. It's called the Scape. It's got a snappy title, the Scape Coastal <laughs> Archaeology Recording App. Okay. If you search for that, <laughs> you'll find it. And then on that app, we've all of the coastal sites that have been recorded over the last 25 years in Scotland through surveys, most of them done by us, are on that app. So you can see where sites are, but you can also add new ones. Oh, Okay, that's interesting. That's brilliant. Yeah, well, we'll yeah, have yeah. to go and have a look for that, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, we will. And also, um, you know, encourage people to um, ha have a look and, and take part, you know, not just um, on Lewis, but uh, all the other uh, aspects of, of the work you're doing. There's quite a few. I'll, I'll put the um, uh, a link to the website uh, up there, uh, Joe, because uh, there are quite a lot of such a diverse lot of projects that uh, that Scape's involved with. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, not just uh, not just prehistoric. Well, the, the nice thing about coastal archaeology is that you have to, it, it, you know, it doesn't, the sea doesn't only erode prehistoric sites, it erodes everything. So yes, it's a really it's nice good. area of research to work in because you sort of have to, be, I, I, I think of it as you become a specialist for like five minutes on lots of different things. Or, you know, last week I was a specialist in, you know, maybe Bronze Age burnt mounds <laughs> and next week it will be, 19th century you know peers or you know it can be any anything that needs attention and that's interesting yeah. you you know we get to spend time on it fascinating oh well loads for people to get <laughs> involved with so, thank you so much for your time it's been a deep pleasure uh talking to you um yeah um, with that in, we will uh, say yeah. uh thanks once again for everybody for watching listening 
And we'll see you all again soon. Rupert, no, no just uh, just <laughs> reiterating that. No, thanks, Joe. And uh, you know, it, it's it's good to let people know actually about you know work like this that's going on that you know people so often don't hear about. So uh, no, it's great. Thanks for coming on. Thank you.